everybody, this is Scott Hutzbatz, Agent Mastermind. Welcome back from a long weekend. I hope everybody had an amazing time with their families and just was able to out, uh, be outside enjoying this uh, beautiful weather we're having in Michigan for once. <laughs> so, um, Stacy, I, I have a dear friend on the phone, a, a lady that is just, her and her team, I, I can't believe the numbers. They're, they're, they're amazing numbers, so I'm going to let her share with you what she did in 2013, and she's already ahead of 2013 as far as numbers. So having an amazing career out in Denver, Colorado, Stacy Staub is with us. She was with us about a year ago. Stacy, how are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you very much for having me back. Good. So, no, you know what, and I'm honored and excited and uh, just privileged to have you on the call with us, and I appreciate you reaching out to us. So, Stacy. Um, has changed. You, know, you told me before this call started. You, you've you've changed roles in your team since the last time we talked. Yeah. So lucky me. Um, since the last time I was on, which I think was almost two years ago, actually, um, I am now director of marketing for Live Urban, um, which it's really the part of the business that I truly love. Um, I'm still selling, and I still get to work with clients because I love that too. But what I really love to do is promote the brand and help our agents build their businesses. So I get to do that almost full time now, um, which is awesome. So I still sell houses to the people that I really love working with. Um, I refer out a lot of business to my team, um, and we do a lot of kind of business that way. But um, yeah, I get to get to sit in the office a little bit more and um, get a lot more computer time, which I really like. Beautiful, beautiful. So, do you mind sharing your numbers because I think it's it's beyond impressive, and I think that if they know who's on the phone, they might uh, not multi. And I would recommend not multitasking because she's going to share some really cool stuff of how she's been able to get her numbers to where they are. You want to share what you did in 2012, what you did in 2013, and then where you're at right now. So, um, yeah, we. I think we did, oh, and I should have had the numbers in front of me. I didn't know you were going to ask me this. I think we did no about. We just over 50 million in 2012. Uh, we topped that last year as a team. Then, uh, when I was last here, I was it was just me and my mom, me and my mom, and now there's three of us. We've brought on her partner Mark, um, who is also an appraiser, which is great to have on the team. Um, and so I'd, um, I'd love to talk about what the brokerage does. Actually, we did over 200 sides last year and um, top 200 million. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it was, it, we've been busy here in Denver. Unbelievable. Um, yeah. So, um, Good it's for you. Fun. So you're going to share with us um, why you guys are doing, like how and why and what, like your role of what you're doing as far as what's, what's, having, what's helping you guys have so much success. I'm going to let you take it away. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take notes. I know that uh, I looked over your PowerPoint, so I love what you're going to share with us. Yeah, so I'd love to just jump right in because there is a ton of information and um, I've kind of come up with some new strategies since the last time that I was on and you'll hear some of the same things because I think a lot of the um, things we talked about last time, this is all long game. We're not talking about, you know, immediate return. It's all about building your business and building your sphere and getting people to your website and transforming those um, online relationships into real business. So. Um, Full disclosure, this presentation is full of photos, and no lie, there's probably 200 photos in this presentation. <laughs> so I'm going to go through um, fairly fast because there's a lot of information, um, and I want to make sure and have time for questions if possible. Um, but just know that I'm going to provide a list of links if you let me know that you'd like it. Um, I have this all in one document where you can click and see these, um, you know, at your leisure. So don't, you know, don't frantically take notes about the sources. Um, if you don't want to. So um, I love just expressing, uh, using all of this collateral. So let me just start there, actually. So um, your marketing should be full of photos, and I'm going to tell you why. This is a shocking statistic, but Pinterest is now the fourth, fourth largest driver of all web traffic, um, according to Mashable. So that's a huge deal. Think about that. Pinterest drives one-fourth of all of the traffic on the web. That's really important. And so if you're not on Pinterest and your photos aren't on Pinterest, you are losing a huge opportunity. And also because, according to Google, eyes are drawn to articles and information that contain photos. Um, statistically, too, um, now that Facebook, I mean, they're constantly changing their algorithms, but 
it's I've seen statistics like your post if it has a photo will get seen by five to ten times more people if there's a photo in the post so that's really important to take a moment don't just say I'm at field day with my kids take a picture of your kid at field day and post that on Facebook and ten times more people might see it so well, you, you know what's funny about that um, Stacy and I won't interrupt you anymore after this but like when I'm going through Facebook on the feed, I literally scroll till I see pictures. I don't read the actual post without pictures because pictures, like they say, say a thousand words. So what you're saying is, and I don't know, I don't know who else uh, does that, but I, I know I'm I'm attracted to pictures. Like when I go to a restaurant, I hate menus without pictures. Mm -hmm. If there's no menus without pictures, I will watch the waitresses come by or waiters come by with food on the tray so I can visually see what the heck they're serving. You know what I'm saying? So it's a big yeah, deal. Totally. Well, Facebook definitely agrees with you, and so mm -hmm. that's a lot of what this presentation is about, actually how to include photos in your posts and um, how to get the most out of taking the time to do that. So what the heck is collateral anyway? When I talk about real estate collateral, um, from a marketing standpoint, um, I'm talking about everything that you create and you use in your business um, to help you promote yourself and your brand. So these are just a bunch of different examples of how we've kind of um, optimized the opportunities that photos create and turn that into traffic to our website, traffic to our open houses, engagement on our Facebook pages, and um, growing our followers on all the different platforms. So quick examples, um, every weekend I put together an open house schedule, it's on our website, but to get people to that schedule, I always put together you know, one of the houses that we're featuring this weekend and just take a minute with PickMonkey, so that's PickMonkey.com, super easy to use, to put text on top of photos. I can't even tell you what a difference that will make um, as far as engagement with and clicks um, through your Facebook page to your website if you just take a minute to do that, especially on Pinterest. If you guys have spent any time on Pinterest, you know that you're far more likely to click on a photo that has text on it because you know what that photo then is going to bring you. You know the information that it's offering. So whether it's a banana bread recipe or a how to paint your kitchen cabinet DIY, if there's a picture that explains what, the, what information you're going towards um, and there's text on it that kind of is like the headline or like the, the goal of the post, you're far more likely to click on it. So. Um, another example, how, one of our uh, most popular blog posts last year was how far is it around City Park in Denver? So we created a little graphic, you know, just text on a photo to go with it, um, and we get a lot of traffic to that post. And um, of course we use it everywhere, Google+, Twitter, Pinterest especially, Facebook. So just by taking that extra couple of minutes and putting in a little more effort, you'll get so much more uh, use out of all of this collateral. So some of these other things, a testimonial, and um, I like to introduce new live urban agents to the market with a cute little graphic that they can share on Facebook, and um, we get a lot of engagement out of those kinds of posts. So um, I'm going to go through a lot of different categories of collateral and how you can use them to build your business. And the first one I think is the most obvious, it's listing photos. Uh, whenever you take a new listing, if you should be spending a lot of money on the photos, right? Um, if you're not, you're missing a huge opportunity. I think even an, you know, a low-end condo can look like a million bucks, and it's totally worth taking the time, effort, and spending the money on a professional photographer um, to take great pictures. Because long after that listing has sold, you can use those listing photos in a bajillion different ways to continue to drive traffic to your website, to continue to win clients. So why should you invest in high quality photos even when inventory is so wicked low? In Denver, inventory is horrifically low. We have about seven days of um, valid active inventory, which is so crazy hard to deal with. But I still um, require all of our agents to uh, stage their properties and to hire professional photographers to take the photos. And I'll tell you why. Um, anytime, even in whatever the inventory looks like, listings are going to sell for faster and for more money if they're staged and professionally photographed. Um, it might not feel like it's worth the effort right now when houses are selling anyway. I mean, you can throw that thing on the market without a picture and you'll still get showings, right? Because people are hungry. 
Um, but uh, high quality professional photos can be used in a million different ways and will continue to drive traffic to your website long after the listing has sold. Um, and I'm going to show you a few different ways how we do that. So I write a blog post about every one of our listings. And in that blog post, I post every single photo. Sometimes there's 35 photos in a blog post, and that's great. Um, I'll tell you why. Because then I take that blog post, and this is as soon as the house goes on the market, I put it on Facebook with a nice photo album of all the pictures. I put it on Google+, I put it on Twitter, and then I pin all of the photos to different albums on Pinterest. Um, and that is the long game for sure. Yeah, a Facebook post goes down the feed, and yeah, you know, tweets only last, you know, as long as they last. But Pinterest, those albums last forever. Um, and they keep getting recycled. It's amazing. Um, I have pins that are five years old now that people are still repinning. Some of them have 800 repins or 1,000 repins. Um, and all of that traffic is going back to my blog because I took the time to write a blog post and post all those photos. The number one thing to not do on Pinterest, never ever pin from the MLS. Because what happens to that after that pin, after the house goes under contract? It disappears. And pinners hate dead links. So always make sure that you're controlling your collateral. And I feel like the easiest way to do that is by using your blog. So if you don't already have a blog, um, it's certainly not too late, and it's only gotten easier. But if only for the purpose of controlling this collateral, please, like, that's the easiest way to do it. Um, I also so, put so, really, so really quick, just, just, uh, just to kind of re repeat what you just said, just so everybody gets it. So what, what she's saying is when you, post a, when you post a pic, make sure that there's a link to it. Is that, is that correct? So, like, so they don't just click on a picture that goes nowhere. Make sure that it goes somewhere, whether... Maybe it's to a video, maybe it's to your blog, maybe it's to somewhere to do with that property is what you're saying. And somewhere that you control. Because, Correct. I mean, houses are selling in a day here. We're not, I'm not really putting in all of this effort to sell this house, right? Um, what I'm doing is using the collateral, using the listing photos as part of our long game plan to keep driving traffic back to our website. So when someone sees, you know, this nice Berkeley living room on Pinterest and they click on it, it goes back to the blog post about this property. But the main point is it goes back to our website. And so then they stick, right? They want to see more blog posts like this. They want to see what else, you know, we have on the market, even if this property is already sold. Um, so that's really like the payoff and the ROI of all of this time. It's just controlling it all and bringing it all back around and making the most out of all of this, you know, collateral. I also put it on, you know, different sites like Flickr, House Happy, um, even Zillow Digs. Um, anywhere where you can find a place to put these photos online that will always end up back at your website, I think it's always worth the effort. Because um, people that love these certain platforms, that's where they hang out, that's where you're going to capture their fr them from. So, does that make sense, Scott? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And I love the uh, fact because, guys, I'm telling you, like, if you go to Stacy, and she's going to give you a bunch of links at the end. But one of the things I really like from the last time you did this class is you put all of like, so you have like third party verification with all your sold properties. I, I don't know why that just stuck with me, but that was one thing that I just thought, well, how brilliant is that? So you can walk into a brand new listing, going, here's what I specialize in. And it's like literally full of sold, 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 sold. And they all go to, I'm guessing, a listing, some kind of listing thing that actually has property information or whatever. So you continue to build your brand. You continue to stay out there on the social media sites, on the Google, on all that stuff. Exactly. So I, I love that. everything you're doing here. Yeah, all of yeah. that. Yep. And this is all stuff that like stuns sellers when you go into a listing appointment. If you're competing for a listing and you go in and you go, these are all the places where your listing is going to appear, yeah, of course it's going to be on Zillow, it's going to be on Trulia, it's going to be on Realtor.com because if it's on the MLS, it's, that's nothing special. Um, but if you're doing all of this kind of extra exposure, um, people, sellers are just like, wow, they can't believe that you put the effort into that. So uh, the next um, category that I um, love to remind agents to make sure and take advantage of is 
they're happy clients. Um, and this is something I talked about last time, and it certainly hasn't gotten any less important. But keep taking those photos of you with your happy clients and with your happy clients in front of the house that you sold them. There's a lot of opportunities to do this. Sometimes I do it at inspection. Sometimes I do it on the final walkthrough, at the closing table. Um, and the you know biggest payoff is when your clients start posting for you. Um, and they tag you in that post. Nothing looks more impressive to the rest of your sphere um, than your happy clients. And especially they see that their mutual friend used you, so who are they going to call? They're going to call you. So keep reminding them that you're a realtor, but do it by telling your story. Don't end the story of your clients and um, being, you know, expressing your happiness and joy for them, not just like at the closing table. Don't just check in at the title company, like take a great picture. Um, it only takes an extra second. Um, and, and now a lot of agents are taking it, not a lot, some agents are taking it to the next level by doing testimonial videos. And I think there is nothing more powerful than a testimonial video um, as far as uh, having people it. believe that you're a great agent and hearing 100% it. 100% agree. Your hey, one, one, si one question, um, and I just thought of this and I'm kind of like throwing stuff out there just randomly. So when you're showing homes, would it not be like to say, hey, I, you know, I don't know which house is going to be best for you. Why don't we take some pics with you in front of the home just so you remember what the front looks like? And then I'll take yeah. notes uh, underneath that. So you literally have like whatever one they go with, you have that ready to go when, when they decide on that home for the actual picture. Congratulations on your new home type thing. Yeah, that would be an awesome opportunity. And you know what that would help avoid? Um, you know what happened to someone in my office the other day? She got a, an offer on her listing and, um, you know, was preparing a counter and then got a phone call from the agent. Oops, we accidentally wrote an offer on the wrong listing. Oh, How my God. insane is that? But if that agent had taken the time <laughs> to do that, maybe that could have avoided it. <laughs> hey, here's, a, here's a question for, um, for you that and I think this is a great question. That's why, I'm, that's why I wanted to know. How do you feel about taking your old collateral and playing catch-up, blogging it after the fact? Absolutely. And you know what? Right now, I'm moving. our market's moving so fast, sometimes I don't even get all of this done while a listing's on the market. Sometimes it's already under contract. So if you go to liveurbandenver.com and go through our blog, you'll find a few posts lately um, that are more telling the story of how this house went under contract in one day. So I do a little interview with the agent and ask them, you know, if they did anything special, why do they think the house sold so fast? You know, do they do they think it was still worth investing in, you know, staging and photography? How many showings did they have? How many offers did they get? People love hearing those kinds of stories. And I still put all the photos in that post so that I have something to pin. Um, so yeah, I think um, when uh, you know, don't think of it as a missed opportunity if you don't get it done right away by any means. Right. Um, so these two examples, um, Greg Gelman and uh, the Seattle Divas up in um, Washington, Greg's in California, they do a great job, and their links will be on my list, um, of getting testimonials from their clients. They do it in a really cute, um, you know, genuine way, and I just love what they're doing. Um, but it doesn't have to be professionally shot either. You could always just have your iPhone at the closing and ask, ask your client a few questions. Um, it doesn't have to be... It doesn't have to be too complicated. Um, so the next category, I call it the days of your life. And these, it's just a reminder that you should be taking pictures of yourself on the job and when you're out and about and sharing what you're doing. Um, just the same as you share that you're at your kid's kindergarten graduation and that you're at your, you know, um, a wedding engagement party or whatever. This is how you spend your days and people find that very interesting, um, especially if you tell a story. and um, like, it, even if you're at a sewer inspection, that's interesting to some people, believe it or not. And so the other thing this does is remind people that you're a realtor without you having to ask for the business. Um, and what's better than that? Just these little reminders capturing your day. And you can use these, you know, in your marketing materials, in your flyers. You never know when the need's going to come up for something like this. So always creating that collateral and not missing those opportunities. Um, I think is really important. Instagram, Instagram like crazy. You can't put too many photos on that. I love um, that. I love that platform. Yeah. And people who, uh, my friends Travi and Cam, they're the Seattle Divas. They work up in Seattle. Um, they do such a good job of this. So if you look for Team Diva Real Estate on webs on um, Facebook, 
um, or you'll find a link to their website on my list. Um, like this was a perfect example. They took their dogs for a walk and turned it into great collateral. They wrote a blog post about it and what they found in the neighborhood, what they came across. They took a bunch of pictures. They Instagrammed it. They tweeted it. And now it lives forever on their blog. And it was a day off. So it just shows like the people that are honestly hustling and on top of it and recognize these opportunities, that pays them back for a long time. And if you search, um, you know, what's it like to live in Belltown, you're likely to find this this blog post. So always pays off to take a minute and do it. Um, you know the you best picture, I think it was two slides ago, and I didn't want to interrupt your, your flow, though, but the one right there where they're holding the sign, that is the coolest picture. I know. See, just that those moments. That is so cool. I mean, yeah. that's just, that shows excitement. I mean, how can you not be excited holding that sign? You know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. Um, so a few other moments. Um, this is my friend Heather. She works with Caldwell Banker in California. She does a great job of um, just kind of like live blogging her day on Facebook, and she's on Instagram a ton. Um, she's known for just taking goofy pictures of herself in front of her listings. Um, and then <laughs> yeah, but she's she, known for it though. I mean, that's yeah, the whole, yeah, that's the whole quite, key. Yeah. Quite a reputation. Um, an artsy picture of a lockbox, for goodness sake. And this was taken by um, Robin Fitch. She's a realtor in Denver. Her um, client took took a photo of the um, lockbox on his doorknob and posted it. So she shared that with her sphere. And then um, on the on the bottom, um, Nikki Beauchamp, she's a great agent up in New York City. And I love the photos that she takes just as she's walking to appointments or meeting people. Um, and she also has quite a series of the David Beckham billboards that everyone enjoys. So I always look forward to those. But just showing that we're also people, having fun, right? <laughs> yeah, having fun, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, so I'm going to go back to videos for a minute just because I think they're becoming not only more and more important, but also more and more accessible to create a high quality um, video that will do a lot as far as your mar to drive your marketing. Um, a couple of examples, last year at Live Urban, we, did, we put together a, little, a one minute intro video for each of our agents. So now we have a library of those on Pinterest and on YouTube. They also um, live on each of the agents' uh, bio pages. Um, and I put Billy and Tracy's on here. They're on the bottom left um, because Tracy just called me the other day and told me she got a deal off that video. So um, wow. always love to hear that. But what can happen, I think, especially when you're on a team um, or like in an agency with a lot of different brokers, um, people are looking for a personality that they can really mesh with. So in these videos, it's not like a straightforward, hi, I'm Heather and I sell real estate. It's more like, well, I just ask them questions, like what's your favorite neighborhood? Where do you love to eat in that neighborhood? What's your favorite kind of architecture? And kind of let their personalities and their niche shine through. Um, and I think people really uh, relate to those and in, in, they'll find someone that they can connect with. As they you, know, it's, um, you know, it's funny you bring that up because I, I think this is a big one. This is a great point about the personality because you are who you are and people want to work with that type, that type of person. So you don't act. Be who you are. And then, like, it's okay if people don't want to work with you. It's okay. But there's so many more people that do that will connect with you or engage with you or relate to who you are if you're having fun. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the biggest Absolutely. example of that is Gary Vaynerchuk. And I follow him, like, religiously. And he... He, like, he's crazy. I mean, he's off the hook. And he, at first, tried to be somebody that he's not. And he's like, you know what? I need to be the, I, I, I need to be who I am to have fun. So he went off and said, I probably lose thousands of followers every day because of my intro. But he says, that's who I am. So if you like me, great. If you don't, it's okay. I so agree with that. And, you know, we're really careful when we hire at Live Urban. Uh, we don't recruit agents. We turn a lot more people away than we bring on. And, and it's for exactly that reason. Like, if we find that they are not comfortable with themselves and who they are like within their business, um, they just don't tend to succeed. So uh, I think it's really important, especially as, you know, what is the stat now? 86% of all people find their agent online or something um, or start their home search online. I think it's really important to have that collateral out there that helps express who you are and how you work. Um, the, another bringing that up, a great example is Ann Jones um, down in the corner and her friend Marguerite Gagere. They're up in Tacoma. They have a series of videos they put together and they were professionally filmed, but they're very simple and very casual and it's just the two of them having a conversation about different things that come up throughout the real estate transaction. 
So they have like what to expect after your home inspection, what, what happens if your house doesn't appraise, and this one was buying your next house, um, what happens if you find a house but you still need to sell, your, sell theirs, and different strategies they have for dealing with that. Um, and they block out like a whole day and film a bunch of these in a row um, and just kind of release one every Friday. So the way they do that then is they put it up on their website and they Facebook about it. They take a 15 second clip out of it and put it on Instagram and they tweet about it. So they push it out in all these different ways. Um, and then what they, what they find is um, that people go to watch that video and they get stuck and they keep watching them. So that's really cool that they've built this library of truly useful, entertaining information. So if you can um, come up with something like that, I think that would be such a great way to express yourself in your business and promote yourself. Because um, frankly, you guys, not a lot of people are using these tools and doing this. Everyone says they're nope. going to, but no one actually does it. So You know, and um, I, I have that written down, and I'll save it for the end. Like, okay, why is it that there's no competition in this realm of what you're talking about here, videos and pictures, and because it takes extra time. I had one agent go, okay, how do, I, how do I incorporate this into my life? I go, well, when you take a picture, just click this button on Pinterest, instead of that button on your on your phone, right? I mean, exactly. that's really what it boils down to. Yeah, and it's just um, taking, you know, the foresight and, like, just thinking about it and time blocking it, you know? It doesn't right, have to be right. millions of hours or a huge production, but just putting it on your to-do list and actually doing it is the challenge. Um, so another thing we're doing and an idea uh, for y'all is um, we're doing these little neighborhood kind of promo videos. They're a minute long. Um, we're lucky to have a relationship with a videographer who's as excited about this as we are. So he's been pumping them out. He just drives around the different neighborhoods and has a representation in each one of them as far as the architecture in the neighborhood, the vibe, the restaurants, the bars, the you know parks, all of that. Um, and they're literally like one minute. So those just live on our neighborhood pages. We also push those out you know, on Pinterest, on um, Facebook. Whenever there's a new one, we do a little you know, marketing push for it. Um, but I think when people are shopping a neighborhood, and especially for relocation, like video has become so important for reloc buyers um, because they really want to get a feel for what it's like to live in a neighborhood, and they want to narrow it down that way before they even come out to look. Um, so we've found that very valuable. Another way we push this kind of stuff out is through BombBomb. Bomb. So I don't know if you guys have heard a lot about BombBomb. Bomb. Bomb. Yep. Yeah, we Great. use it a ton. Um, I like to use it even when I'm just driving. Like, I'll, if someone emails me and I don't have time to email back when I'm driving, shh, don't tell anyone, um, I'll just shoot a quick response at a stoplight and be like, hey, it's Stacey, I got your email. Yes, I'll be at your house at 10 o'clock in the morning. I can't wait to see it. See you then. And what that accomplishes is that they already know who's going to be at their door in the morning, even though they've never met me, um, because they just got a little, you know, slice of what of my personality, just from a little bit. Oh, wait a minute. You use BombBomb bomb to do that? Yeah, so they have an app now, um, and you just, like, it's literally one button on your phone, and you shoot the video, you put who it's to, it pulls from your address book, and you shoot it off, and it lands on Oh, in my God. Yeah, that was worth the video. whole call right there. I'll make sure the other stuff wasn't, but that was worth the whole call. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you guys heard that or not, but BombBomb bomb is an amazing, and I have no affiliation to, I mean, I actually have a, an account with BombBomb, bomb, but... I'm not. I don't. I don't have an affiliate or anything. But and if Stacy does, I would love to use your link to give you credit for that. But I don't. Um, I just think they're a great product, honestly. It, it's an amazing product. So it has a little button on your phone. So if, instead of sending an email, a video message is so. I can't even tell you how powerful that is, especially with what you just said. Can you just repeat that? Like so, when you get an email from somebody and you don't want to, and you're not in your, you're like stopped in your car. We'll, we'll go there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just say, hey, I look forward to meeting you tomorrow at 10 o'clock. I mean, that's so brilliant. Well, on video, because they hear your voice, they see you, and it's just a whole different whole different perspective of how they feel about you. Yeah, and I've also used it to preview homes for people. So all, um, especially reload buyers, again, or when the market's moving so fast, sometimes I'll jump over to a house because I'll know by then whether a buyer is, will be into it or not. And I'll shoot a quick, you know, 30-second email with BombBomb bomb and be like, hey, I think this is your house. You've got to come over here. Like, let me know when we can go see it. Um, uh, and I'll just do like a little, quick little tour into the front door and into the kitchen or something. Um, so that's really powerful. And no one's using it. It kills me. Um, so yeah, definitely check out bombbomb.com. It's really well, easy to yeah. set up. And yeah. they have um, they have individual accounts and they have brokerage accounts. So um, right. so just and just this little statistic. I mean, 
If the average user is watching 186 videos a month, don't you want to get a little bit of that action? <laughs> I would hope so. So figure out a way to incorporate video into your business, please. Um, so another type of collateral that I think um, is certainly worth mentioning um, is community. Um, at our brokerage, we, you know, like I said, we have 60 agents, and they all have different passions, and they all have different ways that they give back. So we try to just support them in that, and also um, try to help them like make their efforts successful, whether it's a coat drive or a pet food drive or whatever. Um, but we also turn it into collateral that we can use and reuse um, all over the different platforms. So. Um, some of these examples, we do Habitat for Humanity builds quite often, so we'll shoot video at those, we'll take a ton of pictures, um, I'll write a blog post about it, and um, letting people know how they can get involved, um, so that's one way that we use that. Uh, there's a local music festival, it's called the Sunnyside Music Festival, that a lot of our agents are involved in, so we're proud to be a sponsor of that and um, help them in that effort, but don't think that I'm not going to take advantage of it by taking a ton of pictures with our logo in it and um, letting people know that we're a strong supporter of that local effort. Um, Share the Cheer was an effort by Alex Took in my market. Um, he's, he has a company called Peak Properties Group. And I loved, he did like a gift drive <laughs> and uh, made sure that 10 families had a really Merry Christmas. And he had the help of his whole team. He also did a really good job of documenting it and telling the story through social media and through all of his different platforms. Um, community is an effort uh, by my friend Joe Scott up in uh, Boston. He owns Unit Real Estate, and he gives back a portion of every transaction um, proceeds to the chair local nonprofit of the client's choice. Um, so of course I had to steal that idea. So I started Live and Give. Um, All right. And All right. So, yeah, we do it a little different than Joe. We chose we let our agents um, nominate nonprofits, and we um, voted on four of them. And so uh, every quarter we get to write a big, huge check to each of them, which is awesome, and people love it. So, um, uh, so I just share that logo everywhere, and it's just now it's just part of the Urban story. Now I got to come up with one, is what you're saying? Holy yeah. Crap. <laughs> if you're not, keep up with Stacy. I got to keep up with Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The pressure is on. So just a few more examples of how we share this information. Um, Robin Phipps again in my area. She's with Keller Williams. She sponsors like a hot chocolate booth at this um, fundraiser every year, and so she does a great job too of telling her story and promoting her team's efforts, but sharing it in a really like genuine way. Um, not, not hard sell, not bragging, just saying, hey, this is what we're doing today. Um, and again, we support all of these efforts on Facebook, on Twitter, on Pinterest. Um, wherever we can push it out and get the information out there, we do it. And you see Joe at the top there, he puts out a great email newsletter. And at the bottom of every one, he talks about his communities program. There's nothing wrong with that. Nope. So um, another, I think, um, area where agents are really missing a brilliant opportunity is with all the market information that we have access to. It's juicy and yummy and people want it and they want it in a format where they can understand it. So linking to your local MLS's market stats page is not the answer. Um, but by repackaging it and pulling out the information that people are looking for, um, you can really create some nice collateral and drive traffic back to your website or, what, or your Facebook page, whatever your goal is. But also, it really sets you up as the expert. When you start you know, talking about numbers and dissecting the information for people, it really helps them understand that they, one, need a realtor. It's part of our value, um, especially now that the information is so accessible. Like, be the one that gives it to them in the format that they're looking for. So I have a few examples. Um, Heather, again, in California, and her husband, they do this little panel once a month with their team members, and they just talk about what's going on in the different neighborhoods and what they're seeing on the streets and what they think is coming next. Um, and Alex up in Toronto, she's the realty queen in Toronto, and she does such a good job. She just flips her iPhone around and does a quick, you know, two-minute update on what's going on in the Toronto market. She does it in a very um, real, understandable way, and she's just chatting with you. Um, about what's going on. So I think that's such a great opportunity. Um, we do a little monthly infographic, um, and we really break down the numbers to where they're really digestible for people, and they're the numbers that people are really looking for. 
And I have to say, we've been doing these for about a year and a half now. And now when the stats are slower to come out, uh, we have even agents in our market calling us going, where's the, where's the market stats? When are you going to put out the infographic? And they share it with our branding all over it. I'm no lie. So um, super worth the time to take to do and very easy, actually. Um, we use InDesign to put ours together, but I've also seen people using Canva lately. So C-A-N-V-A dot com. A really great, easy to use, impressive tool for creating your own infographics. So think about how you could use that in your marketplace and kind of tell the story of your market um, in a JPEG. There is nothing better than that. I also print these out. We put them in our listing presentations. We hang them in our office. Um, we have them outside in a little um, box for people to take, and people take them all the time. Um, I think I think Stacy, um, another good way, like you know, with your with the information you, you already said it, but just to do a video on your thoughts of what this means, like where it says two thousand eight hundred and seven properties went under contract. What does that mean? Like so, when you take all this really good stuff of the information that's what's going on out there, and you turn it into a video, it's so much more powerful because now you're building your brand, you're letting them hear you, see you. Who it, like you, you literally elevate who you are as far as a real estate agent because you're on video and there's so few people doing video. Now you're just looked at as, as a higher end real estate agent because you are on video. You, you, you know what I'm saying? I totally agree. I totally agree. And um, I think, I, like you said, there are so few people doing it. I'm willing to bet wherever you're listening from, there's maybe one person in your market doing it and they might not even be doing it very well. So. Correct. Don't be afraid to jump in there and try it. And if it doesn't feel natural to you and it doesn't feel right, try something else, obviously. But uh, always remember, too, though, it's a long game. Like, building up a library of this information is huge. Um, the other example I have on this uh, slide is my friend Ara. He owns Spring Realty up in Toronto. Those Canadians are doing it right, I'm telling you. A lot of these examples are from Canada. Um, <laughs> They, he just does a quick little market snapshot. Sometimes he writes it on a napkin at the bar. Since this one, he wrote it on his tax bill. <laughs> um, uh. He wrote it on his assistant's arm. Um, it, and it's something, too, like when he skipped a couple months of doing it, people started bugging him for it. Like, all right, where's your market update? So, um, yeah, it really was, a, it made it real for him. Like, wow, I'm doing something right here. People really like that stuff. So, a couple other examples. Um, the Brell team, they're also in Canada, Melanie and Brendan, um, they do a market snapshot for every one of their core neighbor, or every one of their main niche neighborhoods. So they really break it down and um, people really like that information. They, they have seen business directly from it actually. Um, and then a more straightforward one, maybe a little less, you know, um, sexy, but the Berkshire Group in Denver, they do a great job of providing the stats that people are looking for, and they put it in a blog post, and it brings traffic to their blog every month. They've been doing it for years. They were kind of like the, the starters here, so um, I always look up to them for inspiration. So other types of blog posts, and let me tell you, if you're not already blogging, um, a lot of people think that they're not going to be able to think of anything to blog about, right? I find that the bigger problem is finding and making the time to blog. So um, I wanted to give you a few examples of how um, agents that I know are kind of uh, using blogs to their advantage and using them to um, promote their business. So how important are good hospitals to home values in Denver? This was written by an agent in my office. His name is Mick Ortega. Um, his little uh, boy went through a health crisis at the beginning of the year, and he was there for about a month with him. Um, so of course, he, being the guy that he is, he you know, pounded out a blog post about, hey, what di what a difference do, do these good hospitals make to help to home values? And he really analyzed that and broke that down. Um, and he probably would have never thought about that had it not come up, but the opportunity then arose, and um, so he really took advantage of it, which is really cool. Um, you know, Marguerite uh, up in Tacoma, she you know does like coffee shop reviews, which is you know information that shockingly people are looking for. Where's the best coffee in Tacoma? She definitely has the answer, and she puts all of that stuff on her blog, which is also helping those small business owners um, in her market. So um, at the bottom, 30 days to listing your house for sale, and she broke it down into two big blog posts. Um, this was at a time when their market was literally at a standstill. They had no inventory. So she was like, what can I do to help people get right? How can I push sellers off the fence? And like, So she came up with this, and it's a great list. 
Um, and, 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 also, and, and a lot of people are, sorry to interrupt you, a lot of people are asking about links to all this stuff, and I, I believe you have the links to everything that you're showing and all the stuff that you're, so you're she's going to provide that to, you, to us, correct? Yeah, I do. I have a couple things okay. I need to, I just didn't quite get finished with it this morning going through this, sure, but sure. as soon as I have it done, I'll send it to you, Scott. So, so, so what we'll do is, so we'll put this recording up along with her PowerPoint, and then when she has the links available, we'll put, the, we'll put that just underneath the, uh, the PowerPoint. So get with the loan professional that sent you here to get a copy of the recording, PowerPoint, and all the links to all of uh, Stacey's amazing stuff that she's sharing with us. Perfect. And I'll definitely have that done by this afternoon. No I was worries. almost done. Um, <laughs> and then, again, just little market snapshots so we know low inventory could lead to more bidding wars. Always kind of thinking about, like, what's going on in the market. And for us, that has definitely been, like, we need sellers. We need inventory. How can we express that and reach different parts of the marketplace in different ways? So just telling that story again, um, like this one, under contract in two days, like, that is really helping convince people, like, okay, it really is a great time to sell. Yeah. So um, neighborhood information, I think, is another category of collateral um, that a lot of people aren't taking advantage of. So um, what we've done is taken our, we have a page on our website for each of our, you know, main city neighborhoods. And then um, I also have a Pinterest board for each of them. And I don't know how many of you have played around with Pinterest maps, but they're so super fun. So like this one, um, this is where my office is in uh, northwest Denver. So I created the Live in Highlands Denver um, Pinterest board and a map to go along with it. And it is super easy to do. Um, but now when people are thinking about moving to the Highlands and they're looking, say, at a house on 32nd Mole, they can look on the Pinterest map. Okay, where's the house? Now, where is that in, you know, um, in relation to all of these cool bars and restaurants that are pinned here and the parks and the museums and the, you know, where's Very the downtown cool. access? So, yeah, you can really see that in the um, – try to link back to that in the different blog posts um, as I write them. I think I need to do a Pinterest class again. Yeah, <laughs> Pinterest is where it's at. Fourth largest driver of traffic. It's huge. Um, so another idea for creating um, uh, engagement on your Facebook page um, and growing your follower base on platforms like Twitter and Instagram and um, uh, did I say Twitter, um, and Google+, Plus, all those different <laughs> platforms, um, we like to come up with little promotions. So this one over the winter was Hook Your House Up for the Holidays. Um, we gave away a $500 holiday makeover for someone's house. Um, yeah. And to, to enter, they had to like our Facebook page, like us, or follow us on Twitter, and pin one of the pictures from our holiday board. Um, we promoted it for about a month. We had over 1,000 entries. Um, and then the Pinterest board that you see here is one that I created um, with the results of our makeover. So I took pictures all around the house and showed what we did with the house. Um, so people really love that. Brilliant. Yeah, we're doing that on a quarterly basis now. So uh, we just wrapped up um, a garden makeover, and the girl who won, we, you know, we partner with, for this one, we partnered with a stager. For the garden one, we're pa partnering with a local green landscaper. So. Oh my God, that's so brilliant! So you're doing yeah. that every three months for the, like like for a season or something like that? Yeah, every quarter. Yeah, we do. We're gonna do it every quarter. Yeah, I think the next one's gonna be a feng shui makeover. So I'm excited about that. That was that was worth the whole call on itself. There's so many good nuggets here, guys. I, I hope you're not multitasking because this is this is brilliant. So great 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 job on that idea. And I wanted to. So here's a couple more. And you know, it doesn't have to be a five hundred dollar makeover either. It could be as right. simple as you know. Pin a picture of a flower garden and rent, win a hundred dollar gift card to Home Depot. Or I love this one in the middle, like during Snowpocalypse, like you were talking about before we started. <laughs> yeah, um, right. Leslie Lambert. She, I mean, she gave away a Dunkin' Donuts gift card. How easy is that? Um, so you just okay. had to go up, go to her website, fill out a simple little form to win. So she was capturing information, she was creating engagement, she was growing her follower base. I mean, it's all good stuff. And then Amir Shahi, who's also in Toronto, he calls himself the Toronto real estate guy, was giving away, you know, some little Valentine's presents. Um, so it doesn't have to be brain surgery. It doesn't have to be, you know, a thousand dollar, you know, gift certificate or anything like that. Make it easy and just make it fun. So um, just to start kind of wrapping it up, um, cool places to borrow content and inspiration. Obviously, always link back to the original source. But these are places where I go when I feel a little stuck. Um, I'll go to Brightness, which was recently acquired by Angie's List, but it's still a great source for information. And they don't care how you use it as long as you link back to them. Same thing with doorsteps. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with doorsteps, it's a great, great resource for home buyers. 
um, and for realtors to manage transactions in a really fun way. They also just released an app called Doorstep Swipe. It's the funnest real estate app. I mean, I don't know how many fun ones there are. What's it called? Doorstep, Doorstep Swipe? Doorstep Swipe. Yeah. So it's kind of like Tinder for real estate. So okay. what happens is you put in all of your um, parameters, where, you, where you're thinking of uh, buying, in what price range. You can narrow it down even to like bedroom baths, square footage, all of that. But what it does is just pop out the main listing photo for each listing. And you swipe it to the left if you don't like it, swipe it to the right if you do like it. And it really helps you kind of narrow down um, what you're attracted to in real estate as far as real estate goes, especially like architecture-wise and stuff like that. And then it goes to a summary. So it'll tell you the average price of the homes that you swiped right and the number of bedrooms, the number of bathrooms, and you it's built. It's pretty crazy, and it's so fun to play around with. Um, wow, cool. Other good sources, of course, you guys know the guys from BreakthroughBroker.com. Absolutely, all Eric, love him. Yep, love what he's yes. doing there. Always oh. putting out good stuff. Um, yep. Howls and House Logic are also really good sources for content. All right. Always, of course, you know, put your own spin on it, add your own information or thoughts, um, and always provide a link back. And then these are platforms that I've been playing around with um, and having some success with. Vine is one of them. They, uh, you know, 15-second videos. Those are super fun and easy to do. Um, Snapchat. I have been using Snapchat to um, communicate with, you know, obviously younger clients lately. Um, and it's, they really appreciate it. They're on Snapchat all day. So if you're the only realtor that will communicate with someone on Snapchat. It's so crazy. It's so crazy. <laughs> it's so fun, though. It's, and I then, know. Um, it's crazy. I think paper, paper's kind of catching on. It's the new, you know, Facebook app, and it's a new ex Facebook experience. But what paper does is it really reiterates the importance of awesome photos, to be honest, because um, yeah. the photos just show up so big and so huge. And so obviously yeah. some of these book goodies, Scoop It, Reddit, and Tumblr are all places where you can, um, you know, keep pushing that information out, and those all have their own audiences. So, Amazing. Yeah, that's it. And like I said, I'll get I'll get you the links, Scott, so that okay, you can. Okay, cool. Well, we have a, a, a ton of questions. Okay. Um, one of the biggest, um, Stacy, I, I I literally have a whole. Hey, Robbie, now kind of answered your question. Why is she doing so well, Robbie? Oh my gosh, Scott. <laughs> you you know what my biggest question is? Yeah, how do you is, sell real estate? I mean, how long do you blog all day to do team. this? She has a team, though. That's the that's the crazy part about like so. She did. She did over sixty million last year. She's now the marketing person for her team of three. Okay. So there's two other people that sell real estate, correct? Work with buyers, sellers. You you keep the marketing going. So like, what is the cost of not having a marketing person on your team? That's what. That's the number you have to look at. It's not what's the cost. What's the cost not to have it? That's the way I look at it. So, well, I mean, here's the thing. Like, I I do all this myself because I this is what I love to do. But I could also hire my 15-year-old daughter to do a lot of this stuff. And I probably will, over the summer, have her start taking on um, some of these tasks for me. There's no reason why she can't build a blog post and post it on Facebook and post it on Twitter and post it on Google+. Plus. No question. Um, no you know, question. This, is, this is stuff that it, certainly an intern could do. Um, no question. Yeah, so it's more just setting up systems and making it a regular thing. Like, every time I get a listing, I do this. Every time I hold an open house, I do this. Every time I so that you start to it starts to be it starts to become like second nature. And a lot of it also is just while I'm in the field. So I'm at an inspection, I'm at an appraisal, I'm at a closing. All of these things I'm showing houses. I mean, you wouldn't believe the pictures I take of you know funny things that I see in listings or you know of beautiful views that I come across while I'm showing houses. Every minute that you're out with a buyer and they're talking about where to put the TV. Um, you could be creating collateral for yourself and using it in your business. And like yeah. I said, it, it can last a really long time. You could hey, actually do the TV thing. Yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to ask one question. So, Stacy, you are the marketing person for your team. Let's say uh, an agent's watching this webinar and they don't have a marketing person and they're, or they're just starting out or they want to grow. Where would you recommend they start first or how much time should they blog so that they can build up their business to get an assistant and, and things like that I mean so two questions here where would you recommend they start if they can only do a few things yeah. and how much time would they spend so first and foremost um, I think a blog is 
the easiest and most effective place to place your time as a realtor. And this does not have to be sitting down for three hours every day and writing a 2,000 word blog post, not at all. A blog post can be as simple as some a picture of flowers that you Instagrammed you know, on your way into work that morning um, and talking about like how happy you are that spring is here. Um, as long as you're though consistent, like every Friday put out a market report, every or the first of every month put out the stats, or every time you have a closing, post the picture of your happy client in front of their house. Those are all things that we're doing anyway, it's just taking an extra literally five minutes to throw it into a blog post. You know, go on to Brightness and find an article that catches your attention, put it on your blog with your thoughts about it. And there you go. It's so it doesn't have to be super time consuming. So it's, the blog got to be got to be part of your it's got to be part of your day. It has to be part of your day. Mm -hmm. Got to be consistent. And, yeah, yeah. You know, one resource that I use, Katie Lance. Um, so if you go to katielance.com, she has a fantastic content calendar that really helps me stay on track um, for a long time. And now it's become second nature. Like I know what I do on Fridays. I know what I do on Mondays. Um, but she, that's a great resource. If you go to katielance.com and sign up for her newsletter, uh, she'll send you that content calendar, and it's great. It's fantastic. Um, it's K-A-T-I-E-L-A-N-D-S? Yes. Yep, K-A-T-I-E-L-A-N-C-E.com. Okay. L-A-N-T-E? Uh, yeah, Katie Lance. Um, okay, she's, L-A-N-T-E. You know, she's, okay. she's been doing marketing for real estate pros for a really long time, and she really knows her stuff. You'll find a lot of good information on her website, actually. Um, so... How about, have you ever used Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R.com, to do, I guess there's a four now for four bucks, but to write any of your content? Yeah, I have. And you know what I used to use them for, too, before PicMonkey came along and made it so easy to create those photos with text on them? Um, and right. there's a bunch of them. There's over, there's a bunch of them. I like PicMonkey. Um, but I used to use Fiverr a lot for that kind of stuff because I just didn't have the graphic design skills. Um, yeah. It would take me forever, you know, to do the things that they could pump out in two minutes. And they'll, um, yeah. actually, and they'll actually set up a blog for you, too. I mean, they'll set up a WordPress blog for you. They'll, like, you give them a title. Like, we did video marketing one time, and the article come back, it was really good. We wanted yeah. to pick one that we actually knew something about, but, I mean, so F-I-V-E-R-R.com for five bucks. You don't have to sit around trying to think about what to write. Go there. Give them a – find out what's trending. Set up some Google Alerts or something. Find out what's trending and say, hey, write an article on this and see what comes back, and maybe use it, maybe you won't. Maybe get two different versions for ten bucks while you're out doing a video or something, you know, something like that. Absolutely. Now, I always say, like, if it's something you struggle with or it's something that you find really tedious, it's not worth doing. So if you really don't get Pinterest and you, like, really don't understand the point or you just find, like, oh, my gosh, now I have to pin those things, like, right. get someone else to do that for you. Get your wife to do it. Get your daughter to do it. There's someone in your world, I promise, that likes to do it. Absolutely. So, um, find them, yeah. Do what yes. you love. So well, the right. infographics was Pink Monkey, right? Is that the, for the infographics Pink you talked about? Yeah, so P-I-C-M-O-N-K-E-Y okay, com is the place where you can um, uh, drag in a photo and put text on top of it in, you know, millions of different fonts. And then Canva dot uh, com, C A N V A dot com is a really nice um, user friendly site for creating your own infographics. C C A N V A? Yeah. Canva.com, all right. Yep. Um, I, so, so what do you think about buy, buy and thrive? Not quite as catchy as yours. I'll work on that, buy and thrive. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I have a question. Can yeah, I, go ahead, Rob. Um, so if we create all this really cool content and we put it on our blog or we build a website, what's the best way to drive people to become a subscriber to your site? I mean, it's one thing to have a website or have this cool content, but then how do we get the people to follow you? What's the easiest way? You know, I don't think RSS feeds are what they used to be. So we do have a call to action to sign up for our newsletter. We put out a monthly e-newsletter. But I really find that getting people to like you on Facebook is really the most you know, relevant way and easy way to stay in front of them. Um, also getting them to put you in their Google Plus circles and follow you on Pinterest all of, and follow you on Twitter. I really feel like those are the going forward most valuable ways to stay in front of people. Um, I, I am not knocking email marketing by any means. I'm a huge believer in it and we put out a really nice newsletter. But, um, and it, you know, people don't unsubscribe to it from it by any means. But um, 
I really feel like that day-to-day -day interaction and opportunity for engagement is so much more important. Mm. So, so Facebook, would you, you know, I don't know, you, you do them all so well, but would you, like, if you had to, okay, so, like, there's a lot of people going, okay, man, Stacey, this is awesome, but you, you literally covered, I mean, I have a whole page of stuff, like, which one, if you had to pick one, which one would you, if you, knowing what you know now, start over from scratch, we're going to drop you off in Florida, and you got to start all over, which one would you start with? I still live on Facebook. Um, Put on Facebook, okay. Yeah, right. and that's it's okay. still the, the bulk of my business. Okay, so personal page or business page? So I've done it all. Um, I do have a Stacy Staub, you know, Metro Denver real estate um, business page. I don't use it that much. And I'm a huge believer in your personal page and using it right. You will grow your business. But I am still uh, go back to the 90-10 rule. 90% um, of your posts should not be directly real estate related or asking for business. Um, the other 10% can be, but do it in a you know genuine, cool way. engaging way. Exactly. Testimonials. Um, yep. Testimonials. I 100 percent agree with you. I think I'm so glad you went that way because I um, people want to do business with who they know, I like, can trust, and I think personal page all the way wins 90, 100% of the time because they're liking you, they're, they get to like your page, they get to friend you, they friend request. You can only have 5,000, but if you have 5,000 friends that know, like, and trust you, trust me, you're not going to need any more. Exactly. <laughs> not, and so for agents, I just think it's so important, too, to have a really strong referral base. So when someone asks me, you know, ooh, I'm moving to California, I know exactly who to go to, and it's only because I know people on Facebook. Um, and I get business out of that all the time. People know that I'm the Denver girl. I talk about Denver on my Facebook page a lot. And it's not just because I love it. I do. But it's also just to remind people, like, this is where I live. This is what I know. This is where I work. Please, you know, I don't have to ask for those referrals. I'm just the person that pops up in their heads because they see me in their Facebook feed all the time talking about how much I love it. Um, sure. So yeah. it's really important to friend other agents. And your group is so good for that, that agent mastermind group, too. Um, Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's a pretty cool. Now, do you do you? I, and I didn't. You know, I just I, I sad to say, I, I hate to admit this, but on your personal page, you can actually promote a post. Do you ever yeah. do that? Yeah, I do it sometimes. Um, especially if I say something really funny. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I, no, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> but um, if I do something, you know, really brilliant. But yeah, I do think. Um, Especially once you promote a post and you get engagement on it, then those people who don't always see your post will see it. So if they like that post, then they'll start seeing more of your posts. Um, so Facebook is becoming a little bit more pay to play, um, especially on business pages. Like if you don't pay to promote your business page post, hardly anyone is going to see it. But if you throw five bucks at it, you'll get right. you know a hundred times more views. So. Um, when I post on the Live Urban Real Estate page, um, I always promote those posts. Five dollars across the board, um, and we, you know, we get new followers every day. So, our new likes. Excellent. So, um, I know we're coming up on a let's see. A uh, couple things big for me. Bomb bomb. The, the bomb bomb thing's huge. Bobby did. I mean, is that crazy? I, I want to send you a message today on Bomb Bomb Scott. I'm going to talk to you. Dude, about I'm, gonna that. Send, I, I'm going to say, I, I'm not even going to type anymore. I'm just going to click click record. It's crazy. Thought, man, that was the tip done. of the day, man. <laughs> One, you, you know the biggest aha moment for me today, Stacy, was um, listening to you. You didn't use so much your stuff. You used a lot of what you do, but you've surrounded yourself with amazing like-minded people who are doing really well in the industry. And those are, I mean, honestly, I've met them all on Facebook, and I've connected with them at different conferences and stuff, but it's who I look to for inspiration all the time. So I love right. sharing what they're doing because I just think it's so, I mean, you guys, I could show you Live Urban logos all day long, but I think it's right. really important to know that there's, you know, millions of different ways to do this, these kinds of things, and wherever it fits into your lifestyle and your business, that's where you should look to implement some of these ideas. Yes. Yeah. Katie Lance is it L is Katie K A T I E L A N T E right? No C E Lance. C E sorry Lance L A N C E. Thank you. Yeah. A bunch of people and I was typing it in wrong, so I apologize. Katie K A T I E L A N C is in Charlie E. Sorry about that. And those of you who know Katie, make sure and tell her that I mentioned her. <laughs> Absolutely, for <laughs> sure, for sure. 
Uh, Katie Ellie, okay, a ton of those wanting that. So, uh, guys, to get a copy of the PowerPoint and this brilliant recording by Stacy Stavis, I, I really, really, I don't know. I'm just honored that I met you and that you're bringing so much value to the, everybody on this call. And the um, if if we missed one of your questions that you just didn't get, please join us on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash agent mastermind. And Stacy is a, a huge contributor of that. I appreciate that sincerely. And um, God, I wish you had something of, of the, you know, I mean, you, you, you provide so much value here. So guys, pick one thing. I guess if I had to pick one thing, I mean, I know this is hard for most, but the video marketing, I can't stress how big that is. Um, follow Stacy. I love your Instagram post. I love your Facebook. I mean, I love you're always with your family, with clients, just always doing something that's letting people know who you are and just, just brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So um, Aww, thanks, Scott. Yeah. So, guys, I uh, appreciate you joining us today. Rob, Robbie, any last uh, final questions you, that, that you noticed from the group that, uh, that that we might, maybe that was kind of sticking out that everybody was asking? I'm just soaked from drinking from the fire hose. <laughs> I mean, that was, that was if, if you didn't enjoy this call, you're not enjoying real estate. Yeah, this was yeah. and a lot of people missed that because of the holiday, so we'll get the recording up. Wow. It's another recording. Yeah, I know, I know. So a lot of kudos to Stacy. Donna says, uh, amazing, awesome webinar, so much info. So the recording is going to be up. I have it recorded. We, 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 we always do a couple recordings just to make sure we don't lose anything. And uh, Stacy, I really, really, really sincerely appreciate you working on this. I know it was a you know a, a family weekend, and I'm glad you got to do some camping. So, any final words for uh, anybody that you would like to uh, leave them with? Uh, I know that it's overwhelming for most, and like Robbie said, drinking from a firehouse. Anything? I mean, I guess I guess one thing I thought of when when somebody says, "Where do I start?" You know, guys, it's tough making a lot of money. You know what I mean? It's tough <laughs> making a half million dollars a year, right? That's what I think of. It's a struggle. It's a struggle. But honestly, honestly, like, just figure out what part of it you enjoy and just keep doing it. Amen. Amen. So figure out what you love to do. Do that part. And if you don't love any of this stuff, find somebody who does, like Stacy. Like, find somebody that can be a part of that team. Guys, I mean, Stacy, if you, if you had to, like, do it all, how, how, I mean, I know you have a mindset in this. How fast could you literally do what you're doing right now in a different state altogether? I have you ever thought about that? Yeah, I could, it's pretty turnkey, to be honest. Um, I, I think the biggest struggle would be getting to know the marketplace because otherwise this can be done anywhere using the same kind of strategy. So. No question, no question. All right. Thank you so much again, Stacey. Robbie, always a pleasure you. having your brother. Uh, sorry, you're having a little technical, technical difficulty. I hope you get that worked out. And Stacey, you are welcome back anytime. I'd love to have you. Um, just love having you on the class. And uh, if, if everybody could do me a huge favor and go to our private Facebook page and just uh, say thank you to Stacey, um, that would be greatly appreciated by my end. And um, just show Stacey some kudos. And guys, thanks so much for joining us. Honored to be a part of your success and a part of your business, part of your lives. See you right here, same time, same place, next week on Agent Mastermind. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.